the reason, so the first thing, ladies and gentlemen, whenever we see rational equations, first thing I always want to do is just let's write out the LCM. First thing before we even do that, though, let's factor, right? Always want to see if you can factor. Because, ladies and gentlemen, if students do not factor, your LCM looks like this. 3n plus 3 times 4n minus 4 times 2 times n plus 2. Do you guys want to multiply every single term by that? Or even worse, multiply the top and bottom by every term by that? If you wanted to see how, see how that would just produce an equivalent equation and wouldn't produce anything else. But this is a lot to multiply everything by, isn't it? Yes? OK. So what I'd like to do, ladies and gentlemen, whenever we have a binomial, trinomial, let's see if we can factor them out. So let's do 3n plus 3. Well, that factors to 3 times n plus 1, right? What about 4 times n minus 4? That factors to 4 times n minus 1. And what about 2? What about 2n plus 2? Well, that factors out to n plus 1. OK? So do you guys notice some commonalities now that we have? What is common between these? n plus 1. So when we do our LCM, how many n plus 1s do we need to include? Just one. It's the common. What do they have in common? So they, these already have n plus 1 in common. We just need to get the other denominator to have n plus 1 in common. So our denominator is now going to include n plus 1. And what else do the other three denominators? Do the other two denominators include an n minus 1? Do they already have an n minus 1? No. So we need to include that in our least common denominator. And then what numbers do they all have in common? What would the least common multiple be between 2, 4, and 3? 12. So rather than multiplying every single term times this, which just might be your initial reaction, look to factor this stuff first so you guys can see my true LCM is n plus 1, n minus 1, and the number 12. So now what I'm going to do, ladies and gentlemen, is I'm going to first rewrite my problem with it factored. So the problem factored looks like this. 7n divided by 3 times n plus 1 minus 5 over 4 times n minus 1 equals 3n times 2 times n plus 1. Hopefully, maybe this helps you guys see that for all of these to be common, they all have to include an n plus 1, an n minus 1, and the number 12. Okay, hopefully that makes a little bit sense um, moving forward with that. So now we know what our LCM is. Let's eliminate this one so it's not to confuse us. So now we multiply everything times our LCM. So we're going to multiply this times n plus 1 times n minus 1 times 12. Here, n plus 1 times n minus 1 times 12. Here, n plus 1 times n minus 1 times 12. Okay. Now, what we'll notice is, let's see, the n plus 1's, those divide to 1. 12 divided by 4 leaves us with a, or 12 divided by 3 leaves us with a 4. 4 times 7 is, 4 times 7 is 28 times n minus 1. Oh, 28n, sorry. Then over here, the n minus 1's cancel out. 12 divided by 4 leaves us just with a 3. So now I'm left with 3 times 5, so it's going to be a minus a 15 times n minus 1. And over here, the n plus 1's cancel out, or divide to 1. 12 divided by 2 leaves us with a 6. 6 times 3n is going to equal 18n times n minus 1. Whew. So now, yes? Yes, it would. Thank you. You should cancel out that one, right? Thank you. OK. So now we need to apply distributive property. So this is 28n squared 
minus 28n minus 15n minus 15 equals 18n squared uh, minus 18n. Okay? So, how are we going to solve for our variable n? Right? The last example was pretty basic because it was linear. You just get x by itself, right, and solve. But now we have an n squared. So that's going to tell us it's going to be a what type of equation? Quadratic. quadratic. And how do we know how to solve quadratics? Factoring, completing the square, quadratic formula, right? So to do all that, though, we have to set it equal to 0. So the first thing I need to do is get my 18n squared and my 18n to the other side. So therefore, I now have 20n squared minus 10n, oh, minus 10n, and then, so then that's, so that's plus 10n squared, so that's going to be minus 25n, right? No. Um, well, no, negative, tw so this would be negative 10n minus 15n, which would be negative 25n, right? negative 25n minus 15 equals 0. All right. Now, how do you solve for this again? Well, again, ladies and gentlemen, we notice, do they all have something in common? Can we factor something out? A 5, right? So let's factor out a 5. Then I'm left with 4n squared minus 5n minus 3 equals 0. Now we need to look at this. Can I factor 4n squared minus 5n minus 3 equals 0? Is that factorable? Yes? I did negative 28 plus 18 equals negative 10. And then I did negative 10 minus 15 is negative 25. Oh, it should equal 10, right? Thank you. I'm losing my mind. So they still equal 5, so then this is 2 then, right? OK. Thank you. So now when we look at this and we say, all right, is 2n squared minus 5n minus 3, is that factorable? Because we don't need, really need to worry about our, our factoring out of 5. Is this factorable? Yes, it is. Let's see, we could do it as, because you guys are so good at and quick at factoring, you could do 2n times n equals 0. You know that they have to multiply to give you a negative number. So this would be negative 2 and, oh, I'm sorry, negative 3 and positive 1. So now by applying the zero product property, you have 2n plus 1 equals 0 and n minus 3 equals 0. Subtract 1. 2n equals negative 1, divide by 2, divide by 2, n equals negative 1 half, and add 3, n equals 3. Huh? The 5 is not going to affect it, though, because what's gonna, when I solve for 0, the first thing I can do is divide by 5, right? So if I divide by 5 on both sides, then I'm just, just still left with that. So yeah, I didn't forget about it, but it's not going to affect my solutions. OK? OK, that's it. I know that's a long problem, guys, so I wanted to go through it. So you guys have a nice.